September is Suicide Awareness Month, and as we are in a series on traumatic grief, it makes sense that we need to talk about the idea of suicidal considerations and how those of us who have gone through or are on a grieving journey might experience them. Thoughts of suicide are scary. Wanting to exit stage left while our mind and body system are on a healing journey are intimidating, especially if we've never had them before. And if we had, it can be even scarier because it might trigger us into remembering other experiences of despair and darkness. It's one of the reasons why I use so much of the Havening Touch in my client care and my personal life to help regulate all of those hormones because it's one of those really cool self-made tools that we have in our hands that actually changes the neurobiology of our brain. But why do we experience suicidal considerations when we're on a grieving journey? Well, separation anxiety is a very real thing. Now, a lot of people hear about separation anxiety when it comes to our relationship with our dogs. So I'll say, yeah, my dog has really bad separation anxiety. I can't leave at home alone for very long. And humans can have really severe separation anxiety as well. And that anxiety is done in triplicate when we are on a grieving journey. Our amygdala and our hippocampus get directly impacted in experiences of grief and loss, and especially in experiences of traumatic grief. Our amygdala starts over-functioning and over-performing, and a lot of those fear-based, primal, survival-focused ways, guiding the way our mind-body system is making sense of the world. And our thinking brain knows the only way to go be with them is if we're no longer walking on this planet of ours here that maybe there's a different way we can go be with them. And because our amygdala and our hippocampus and all those chemicals are functioning in such different ways, that can come across as suicidal thoughts. In truth, it often isn't. It's not that we're wanting to hurt ourselves or to take our own lives. It's that our mind and our body system are warring and battling within themselves to find a way to ease the pain. And that's actually not that different from suicidal considerations on a general level. When our brain says, hey, I need to exit stage left, it's because our brain is going, there is no other survival pattern for going forward. The pain is too much and our brain is trying to keep us alive and reduce the pain as much as possible. Thoughts of suicide are a part of the human experience. Our thinking brain is always grappling with the information that our primal brain is giving us. And so knowing that our brain is going to be creating stories to help us find a way out of the agony and that that is actually a protective mechanism is very important. It's important for those of us who are struggling to know. And it's also very important for those of us who are walking alongside people who are in pain to know. A really powerful way to support ourselves or those who are struggling is to be in presence with them, to show up to let them know that they are not alone. And for those of us who are struggling with our, inner, our own mind-body systems to reach out for help, to reach out and say, hey, can you just come sit with me and be with me? So that that separation anxiety isn't so overwhelming and there's a softness that becomes invited into the experience. Everything in our world shifts and changes as we go on this journey called life including our relationships, including those that we love. And loving comes with loss. It is inevitable. And so the more we can create loving, kind space for ourselves within that journey and give our mind and body the permission to have hard times, to grapple with finding ways through the pain, and to also be mindful that this too shall pass, even if right now it feels like it's going to last forever. And our amygdala is very good at that last forever part. Remember, she can take over our brain and decide the future for us. And those scary stories are coming from our amygdala, not from our whole brain body itself. So the more we can hold space for all of that, the easier it becomes to continue to keep breathing and find a way forward. And on Sunday, I'll be releasing a guided meditation to help you connect more fully with how to create the spaciousness that your system may be needing in order to continue your healing journey. 
It's an honor to be walking on this path with you. Healing is possible. Keep breathing. Keep giving yourself the love and the care that you deserve. I'll see you soon. Thank you.